The weapons were produced since 1992, but were not used during Allied Forces operations when NATO entered the Kosovo War. And sensor fusion weapons were first fired in combat during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Yes, this is a CBU-105 anti-tank smart bomb that blends with the sensor. Let's talk more about this bomb. Before that, for those who haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Activate the bell to get updates from this channel. The CBU-105 anti-tank smart bomb blends in with the new sensor. This weapon can carry an explosive payload weighing 450 kilograms. The CBU-105 was initially developed as the CBU-97, cluster bomb unit, which was an unguided airdrop munition. With the addition of fins, a guidance system, and a more streamlined body, the CBU-105 was born. This system was also called, the Wind Corrected Munitions System. Patents for this weapon system date back to 1979 in the US when in partnership with Textron Systems, the US Air Force tested the initial versions of the CBU-97. The addition of the wind correction and smart guidance system made it a lethal, precise air-to-ground weapon system. The CBU-105's 26 meters, 85 feet, SEP, circle of equal probability, of the WCMD is lower than some other PGMs, precision-guided munitions, in service with developed armed forces but it is adequate for submunitions designed for suppression operations. Primarily intended for seed, suppression of enemy air defenses, operations, the CBU-105 is being positioned as an effective anti-armor weapon, thanks to its wide area of coverage, all-weather utility and multiple platform compatibility. When a CBU-105 SFW, sensor-fused weapon, is deployed, its onboard navigation system uses GPS and sensors to navigate the bomb to a point closest to the target. When the sensors determine that the waypoint has been reached, a release door is opened. 10 BLU-108 sensor fuse submunitions or mini-bombs freefall towards the target. Let's look at what happens to one of the 10 submunitions. Parachutes are installed in each submunition. And when the bomb is dropped the parachute will open when the specified target zone is reached. When it reaches the specified height, the parachute will be discharged with the help of a small rocket. Along with aligning the direction of movement correctly, the rocket adds angular rotation to each submunition. When the sub-ammunition began to spin at high speed, four hockey puck-shaped sensor smelting projectiles called skeets were pushed out due to centrifugal force. An infrared sensor is mounted on each skeet. This locks onto a target and detonates the skeet. This explosion releases a molten copper penetrator, which is hot enough to penetrate armor. A wide shrapnel ring is also created because of the fragmentation of the skeet. In case the bomb has been dropped accidentally or if all targets have been eliminated, the skeet self-destructs on hitting the ground. This is to prevent the risk of unexploded munitions setting off explosions when friendly forces move in. The CBU-105 has a greater than 99.6% reliability rate, and has been purchased by many countries so far. One of the biggest orders was a 1,300 bomb deal signed by Textron with Saudi Arabia in 2013. With the addition of the CBU-105, the IAF will have another potent weapon to field against